Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Be A Boss Coaching Podcast. My name is Beatriz, and today is a very special episode for two reasons. Number one, on Monday, February 12th, I will be having a free webinar called the Clarity and Strategy Webinar for anybody who wants to elevate their strategy game and get clear at the same time. I will be launching this along with my new Clarity and Strategy program. It's a mini program that I will be announcing on the webinar, talking about how to use strategy to get clear on your business moves. And you will be available to register and enroll for my mini program. Anybody in attendance will receive $50 off my first round of launching. So I'm really excited for you to be here. Come and register at the link in the show notes where I will place it there for you to register today. And of course, you can always visit my website and my link in bio on Instagram. Number two, this episode is my first live recorded episode with my friend Lucy Ortega. She is a serial entrepreneur who has built several businesses over the years, a money and business coaching business, her food business, Sierra Mexican Cuisine, and a new cafe in Southgate. She is the recipient of the $10,000 Verizon Small Business Digital Ready Grant and a $5,000 Creciendo con TikTok Small Business Grant. She has been featured in Voyage LA and she is a participant of Feria de los Moles here in LA County. I can't wait for you to listen to her story, learn more about Lucy and learn from her journey. And I hope you enjoy the show. All right. Hi, Lucy. Hi. <laughs> this is the first time we're doing this. <laughs> and I'm doing this is my first live podcast with Lucy. I am so honored to be here with you today. I'm excited and I'm learning a lot <laughs> with you. I don't know what you're doing, but this is intriguing. I I honestly I'm this I don't know how we we'll figure it out later. But anyway, now I'm gonna fade out. You guys see this? I'm producing my own podcast. All right, I'm gonna fade out. But all right, Lucy, I'm so excited for you to be here. Um, I This is our first live recorded podcast. I'm doing a video as well. We're doing it right here. So we'll see how this turns out. I hope it's like super awesome. But um, I'm so excited for you to share your story, Lucy. Uh, as you can see, we have a lot to talk about. This is Lucy's own restaurant and cafe. So yes. I'm going to let you introduce yourself, introduce your business, and we'll take it from there. Well, thank you so much, Beatrice, and for making the drive here. <laughs> and this is, I'm, I'm very excited that we're doing this. So I am Lucy, and I am a serial entrepreneur. I own this cafe. I also own a taco stand. And I my very first business was a party rental business that I started when I was a second year teacher. Yeah. So that's when my whole journey as an entrepreneur began. Yeah. Oh, my God. So wait, you owned a party rental business. And then before that, you were a teacher. Or you were doing teaching and doing the party rental business at the same time? Yes. So I started teaching right after college in 2017. And then 2018 was when I had like my money journey epiphany. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know, this income's good because I am I don't have kids. I'm not married. Yeah. But it's not enough. Yeah. And I decided that I had to make more money. And I don't know why... I, well, actually, I had already started tutoring. Mm -hmm. I had already tutored for maybe almost a year mm -hmm. at a tutoring company, and but it wasn't enough. Mm. So then I think that was the reason why I was like, well, I need to start my own business. Yeah, yeah. And I got a 10K loan at a credit union. Yeah. It's um, school's first credit union for teachers. And I bought a business from someone that was retiring it. A tutoring business. A, the party rental oh, business. Oh, party yes. rental. So you had bought that business yes. from someone that had already started it. 
mm-hmm. and and was that a brick and mortar business too or no so that business was we have a back well we have a lot of space in our backyard and i was like well we can store all the chairs tables so i remember going all the way to east la i'm from south la and i went all the way to east la with my dad and my uncle's big truck and i think two other workers uh, of his that he let me you know borrow and we started putting everything into the truck and i remember right there and then i mean i was very skinny i mean right now i'm a pretty thin person i was thinner um and i remember i was only able to pick two three chairs at a time Mm. now i can pick up to like eight chairs (laughs) but i remember this is going to be a lot of work and that was the beginning so that was in 2017 2018 2018 Okay. And I was teaching and running a business. Yeah. Oh, my God. So I'm interested in learning more about why entrepreneurship called to you. You know, I, I know that you identify as a serial entrepreneur. And you had a party rental business. You had a taco stand. You have... Um, you're are you still doing money coaching and we're entering business coaching yes in march oh my gosh and now you have a brick and mortar but before we get into that i I would like to know more about how you came into the entrepreneurship world like what called you to be like i'm i want to be an entrepreneur i want to be a business owner so i i didn't start calling myself an entrepreneur until like 2021 and this was like, what, 1923 years after I started my first business. Mm-hmm. Every time peop- I would, people would ask me about like my, the party rental business, I would, I would always describe it as something I was doing on the side. Mm-hmm. So I saw it as a project. I didn't really see it as a business, uh, maybe even like as a side hustle. Mm-hmm. And I think it was because I just couldn't see myself like the identity, I, I didn't describe myself as an entrepreneur, not even a business owner. Mm. So I think when I start, if we go into like the root of the problem of why I couldn't identify as an entrepreneur, it was because I had a lot of money trauma. Mm. And for me, like money was very scarce growing up. We, I, I was raised low income and my parents would always fight about money. Mm. My dad's a very complacent man. He He sees like, the joy in everything and while my mom is like very entrepreneur so her family's actually super entrepreneur we they had they they did have jo- a job but it was more it was run like a business mm. so because i saw all that clash between my parents i was like i don't like money and i don't even want to talk about money and i think i also had a really bad relationship with my mom that I did not want to be anything like my mom. Mm -hmm. And one of my mom's identities are, is that she's an entrepreneur. She has multiple side hustles, streams of income. Um, She finds money, like money le llega como sea, like she'll Mm -hmm. figure it out. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to be that, you know, I didn't want to be like her. So I think that was another reason I, I really, really rejected that identity. Oh, and what made you want to embrace that identity? Mm. I can't remember that's like when I can't really remember like when the light bulb turned on for me but I think it was like little by little uh when I was doing money coaching one of the things that one of the trends that I saw with a lot of my clients was that a lot of us were in the nonprofit sector Mm. so we were teachers social workers like very giving careers and a lot of them were making enough to pay the bills but not enough to invest not enough to like build the business and that was when i started coaching them how to like start their own businesses increase their income and that was when i was maybe like oh i have to like how am i supposed to help other people start a business and be business owners and entrepreneurs if i myself don't you know claim that identity and i think that was when i started um identifying with that identity as an entrepreneur Mm -hmm. that's awesome okay so after your party rental business like what happened um with that business like how did you did you sell it or you like what what happened after so i got it in 2018 
And the reason I got the party rent or I started the party rental business was to pay pay my debt. I was also a master's student. Mm -hmm. I was getting my master's in education. So a lot of those things motivated me to increase my income so I can pay off my personal debt, my schooling and anything that I still had to pay off. Yeah. And which will be which is like the irony, right? Why would I go get a 10K business loan to go mm. more in debt? Mm. Uh, but actually, I ended up paying off all my debt in, an, in 18 months. So by the end of 2019, I had paid off all my debt. I had paid off the business loan. Uh, and I had also saved, I believe, 10 grand. Yeah. And But I had burned out because mm-hmm. all my time and all my energy and money was going into the business, was going into paying off that debt. So I, I realized I had done everything quote unquote, the right way, but then I have forgotten about myself. Mm. So then in March of 2020, well, February of 2020, I actually ended up quitting teaching because I was just so burned out. I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. And I left teaching and a couple of weeks later, COVID hit, yeah. which was like, I should have probably stick it a little bit more because then everybody would have been at home. Yeah. But yeah. Um, because COVID came, the party business also shut down there no one was making throwing parties right. and we ended up just keeping the material so now it's just more like an extra source of income for my dad yeah. because we still have a lot of our clients still call it so we have clients since like 2018 oh. we continue uh, serving their parties year after year because they already we already have relationships with them so oh. that is pretty cool Right now, we're not really revamping, but I had to pass out a lot of flyers for this business around this neighborhood. Yeah. And I said, well, the other side's going to be empty. Might as well add something. And I ended up adding, like, the party business information. And, yeah, we already got, like, two different quotes. Okay. So it, it's something that we do more on the side. We have the materials. I have thought of selling it. But at the same time, we ourselves throw parties, so we save ourselves, like, I don't know, like 500 bucks every time we throw a party yeah. because we have all the material. So that's kind of like the plus sign of keeping it. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. So it's still alive. It's still going. Yes. <laughs> okay. But your dad runs that more, like he's more in charge of that. Um, Correct. Part yes. Of the business. Okay. So 2020 happened. We all know what happened in the pandemic. Um, so when did you start getting into uh, money coaching and business coaching like when did you begin to see that as a business opportunity yeah so it was literally during COVID too because I'm, we couldn't go out and actually January of 2020 I had started going to a community college after school after teaching I would drive to a community college and I was taking two classes one on personal finance and the other one on investments and even though I knew most of the things they were talking about I wanted to learn how the teacher was teaching it Mm -hmm. because my goal was like well eventually I want to teach personal finance Mm -hmm. to 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 folks like communities um, organizations anyone that wanted to hear about personal finance so that was like my end goal so when COVID came I just continued delving into like the personal finance and then I just in May of 2020, I started my Instagram page, and I don't remember the first name I gave it, but I slowly just wanted to put content out there for, mm-hmm. for people of color, women, first gen to, to, to talk about money. And I think at the very beginning, I, there was not many of us, or, or actually there, there were some, which, was, which made me very excited because I'm like, oh, there's other people like me that want to talk about money because for the longest I have been like listening to like Dave Ramsey and yeah. all these like, some were good, like two cents or two pennies, um, two cents on YouTube was really good. But it was just it just didn't feel like there was that authenticity or that culture, mm. that part that was missing when it came to talking about money. Yeah. And I slowly got into that. And I was going through a lot of personal development at the end of 2020. Like I left a, a really bad relationship that I felt that was keeping me stuck. Mm. I mean, they were not supportive. They were very jealous. And I feel like in entrepreneurship you have to be out there all the time you have to put yourself out there and i feel like if you're in a certain relationship that like has you contain your your success level is also going to be contained because i saw myself with the party business like not wanting to like 
take any clients that were males because I didn't want to have a wrong impression and all that. And I think that just was also very bad for me because then it was like, am I doing something wrong? And so during 2020, I was like, okay, I'm out of that. And I started just like doing a lot of healing and taking care of myself. And eventually as I continued posting content about personal finance, I was like, I want to help other women. Mm -hmm build their investments account, get their budget straight, yeah. pay off debt. And that's what, how I got into coaching. Yeah. And that was good. I mean, I had a really great amount of clients, really good clients. Mm -hmm. But in 2021, at the end of 2021, I was also kind of burning out because I was no longer passionate about being a teacher. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I, I just, I felt stuck again. Like, mm -hmm. oh, like, I'm in these four walls for like seven hours and the kids are great, right? But I also feel like there's more to life than this. And my cousin ended up passing away. So I had a cousin who was like 20 years old, very young, died in a car accident out of nowhere. And that was the first death we had in our family. Like our first, well, after my grandmother, but she was already sick. So mm -hmm. it was the very first one. And I said, well, that's going to come to us anytime. Mm -hmm. Like I might be, you know, I, I, I might plan to stay teaching for 10 more years or 20 or 30, but what if I die like right after and like, I didn't get to live my true, true dreams. Mm -hmm. And the idea of like starting a food business with my mom had already like been planted because she had already started selling food since the, the beginning of 2021. Mm -hmm. And I had seen that people were coming and I just thought with my, with my expertise in social media, and because I was already getting clients through social media, all of my clients were from social media. I was like, if we put this on the internet, if we are actually very consistent with posting, we have our Instagram, our TikTok, our Facebook, there's going to be more clients. We're going to make something out of this. And in May of 2023, no, tw May of 2022, I actually left my job. Once again, I quit teaching. Oh. Um, so I saved enough to like, I, I saved enough for six months, but, um, yeah, I saved enough for six months, but in my head, I thought, I think I'm going to be back May, um, January of 2023 back into the classroom. So I, in my head, I'm like, this is going to be like a six month journey. It's already January, 2024. And I'm still here <laughs> with the brick and mortar now. With the brick and mortar. I mean, honestly, like those are all of the different paths that I, sometimes I that's what entrepreneurship is it's like you see a path and you just take a risk um, and that's what I see in you is is when you see an opportunity and it's there and you start visualizing what what could be right like well like what could happen um, and yeah we don't know but I think that is um, a character of entrepreneurship that I think that is being able to take risk but also knowing that if something does not work out that like you you can still pick yourself back up you can still bounce back um and that's mm -hmm. what i love about working with women of color and just like um first gen like my pop queer entrepreneurs like there's always that resiliency that i think makes us like really good entrepreneurs and like mm -hmm. business owners um so that's awesome now you have a new brick and mortar and I listened to your story around what happened, right? Because I know that you had seen the open um, lease sign. And, and, and so can you tell us a little bit more, just like quick around how, how you decided to open this, this business? Yes. So one of the things that I told myself when I started the food business is I want to do everything the right way, the quote unquote the right way. So my mom has always sold food to friends and family and that's good but I was thinking if I'm gonna go in this has to be bigger it has I have to take it one step ahead so for me it was like having all the paperwork ready and as I got more into the business I realized okay well for me to have all the paperwork the public health permits the city permits I have to have at least a trailer you know the street vendors are not allowed to have a, a a permit or a public health permit because there's all these other requirements that are required to have so i ended up buying a trailer mm -hmm. 
and I think that was like 25 grand. Mm -hmm. And I ended up getting the public health permit permits and doing all the pa well, basically all the paperwork. So for me, it, and that was a big step because there's a lot of things and a lot of fees I did not know that came with it. Like if you have a trailer, you need to store it somewhere and that costs money. Yeah. And even if it's your trailer, yeah. it, still, it still has to be under a, um, a public health, basically a warehouse or commissary. Yeah. So that, that journey also challenged my mind because I'm like, oh, on top of whatever I thought I had to make, you have to make this more yeah. <laughs> to cover for that cost yeah. uh so and there were times where i felt really bad because i'm like why am i doing all of this mm. this is hard this is difficult and then but then it, it's crazy because I, I i kind of found it pointless because i'm like well i could i could just be like i don't you know with in la you can kind of get away with it because street vending is like a thing but I, I was just, I'm like, am I being like, am I rushing this? Right? Then you start, I would go back and forth. Am I rushing this or am I doing the right thing? And then we got into, I, I met the, the Feria de los Moles. Mm -hmm. So it's an organization. It's an event, actually. It gets thrown every single year and it's like festival for moles. Mm -hmm. And usually Puebla and Oaxaca are the main states in, in Mexico that are known for, for their moles. And we got in. And I'm telling you this story because one of the one of the requisites that they needed from us was a public health permit. Mm. So then when I look back, I'm like, if I wouldn't have had this permit mm -hmm. and this trailer, I wouldn't have been able to participate in this event. So I think a lot of the times we we're like, why did I do that if it wasn't worth it? Mm. But then that leads to another opportunity. And that same day that I met with the, the or organizers, right away when I introduced myself, I gave them two, I gave them an idea. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, well, I can do vegan, vegan mole. Yeah. And they're like, you're in. <laughs> and I was one of the, I was the last one. They only had one more spot and they had like a wait list of people. Yeah. And they're like, you're in. Mm -hmm. You gave us a really good idea no one had given us. Okay. And I was like, oh, okay. And that same day, actually, I had seen I had passed by because I, I actually used to go to a coffee shop um, down the street and I saw this sign, the sign that said leasing. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, let me just call and see what what they need. Yeah. So uh, I actually I emailed them and I said, hey, I saw the sign. Can I have more information? Yeah. And they're like, OK, well, rent is this much and the equipment is this much. And then we jump on a call with the former own, owner and she like started giving me the numbers and I'm like, okay, well, I need to sit on this mm -hmm. because I can afford it if I were to sell the trailer. Yeah. But I was like, I don't think I'm going to sell the trailer anytime soon. Yeah. So then she calls me. Two I never call her back. Two days later, she calls me. She's like, hey, did you think about it? You know, I, I have two more people interested. Well, one person dropped and one person, one guy is. Mm -hmm. But I would like to, for you to take it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know, honestly, I like, I like, I, I like the location. I just don't think I can afford it. Mm -hmm. And she's like, what's stopping you? I'm like, well, the money. Yeah. <laughs> and then she's like, well, besides the money, is there anything stopping you? And I'm like, no. Mm -hmm. And she's like, all right, I'll finance it for, to you. Mm -hmm. So she like finance part of it. And I was like, all right, then I'm going to take it. So I came to yeah. see and I was like, okay, you know what? This is it. Yeah. But this place doesn't have a hood, which is what you need to cook tacos. And when I was talking to her, I was like, well, you know, I can buy a hood. She's like, you know, you can get this type of hood. There's a lot. There's technology has evolved. So there's like smaller hoods. And so we signed the contract and everything. And looking back again, this is like one of those things that I wish when you don't have any support. Like I was like, oh, yeah, this looks fine. You know, the lights are on. The water's running. Yeah. OK. But there's just so much detail that you sometimes have to look into. Yeah. And. Once I started to figure out the paperwork, which this time around, I wasn't scared anymore because I had done paperwork for my trailer. Yeah. But I st but the paperwork is in a different city. This is Southgate. I'm used to doing paperwork for L.A., so it's a different yeah. game. Mm -hmm. And then as I started talking to other restaurant owners, they're like, yeah, it's going to cost you more than what you think. And you have to do this and you have to do that. And it was going to take such a long time and not 
trying to sell tacos here without a hood is basically impossible and i'm like i don't want that stress mm -hmm. so i had to make that tough decision of like you know what i i, I was really heartbroken because i'm like i can't make tacos here mm -hmm. so then i was driving down the freeway and i was really sad and i was like i think i'm gonna have to close this down call it a day like it it was like i opened to september well i got the key september it took us two weeks to clean here yeah. and, and restore some stuff september 15 we started opening and by october 20 we were, i was like i'm contemplating about closing this place because it's just a lot yeah. but as i was driving down the freeway i was like wait hold up like i have a place it's not like there, it's so empty room it has running water it has fridges i'm like let me just turn it into like a mexican mexican cafe and it's like a light bulb turn on. And I'm like, this is not the end. Yeah. And I started, um, but I, it, it, but it felt like a breakup. I remember just getting home and sleeping on the floor for like two hours. And I'm like, I just don't want to remember anything. And I woke up and I'm like, yeah, we're going with that. We're changing concept right now. Mm -hmm. And I took like those two days. I, I closed completely. I think it was like Thursday. And I'm like, I'm not going to open until Tuesday. Mm -hmm. I took like two, three days, just like, it, it, it felt like a heartbreak. Even the next day, like for two, three days, I was like, my heart was like, oh, I don't want to wake up. I don't want to think about this, you know, new reality. But um, I, I think by Sunday night, Monday, I started creating a menu and I went to buy the things and then Tuesday I opened and, and that was it. And, and slowly but surely I started, you know, taking it one step at a time and, I'll be honest, when I started looking at the numbers, the profit margins for a cafe are much better mm -hmm. than a taco stand. Yeah. And I was like, okay. And I also remember saying, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I was raised Catholic, so I, you know, I, I still pray. And I, and I remember telling God, like, God, I don't know mm -hmm. what I have to do, but, I'm, but this is the best thing that's going to happen to me. And that, that's all I was saying. Like, this is the best thing that's going to happen to me. This is the best thing that's going to happen to me. And honestly, like, I this concept, we're next to a school. Well, we're next to three schools, an elementary, a middle school, and a high school. And this concept has been so much better um, for us. Kids yeah. want to come. Kids want their smoothies. Kids want their toes. And I feel like, you know what? Maybe this was what it was meant to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh my god, that's incredible. I mean, honestly, like, that's pivoting. You're like, you pivoted to the situation, right? And that's the, you've assessed the situation, you understood the neighborhood, right? Like, even, I think that, that when it comes to a brick and mortar, neighborhood is very uh, key to what you're gonna do and what business you're at. Like, I, rem I remember being in high school and going after school. Like that was the, the ways that me and my friends hung out as we would go to the nearest cafe or donut shop and you know, that's how we would hang out. Um, so the fact that you knew the different schools and like catering to, to that, right? To that yes. community and to that opportunity, pivoting to that. Um, and it does suck, like you made the tough decision to, to let go of the tacos, but you know, at least for now, you have, you're doing what you have to do to keep it open. Yes, and you know what made it, what made pivoting easier when I started to think about everything was, I started May of 2022. The tacos actually were also a very new concept. We started the tacos June of 2023. So from May of 2022 to June of 2023, so for almost 13 months, we actually were selling quesadillas. Mm -hmm. And it was a very, it's a, again, a different style quesadillas. And so when I was like, wait, I only have had these tacos for like, what is it, July, August, four months. Mm -hmm. I think it was just more like I wanted things to go my way. Yeah. You know, yeah. my way or the highway. And I yeah. think in entrepreneurship, um, that's, not, that's not always the reality. And I was like, well... You know, the taco concept is really new and I, I the stand is still there. And eventually, I think if an opportunity comes where another brick and mortar, if, if I want to, right, if a brick and mortar comes up and it does have a hood, then we can relocate the tacos there 
and expand from there. But at the same time, it's, I, I, I think as an entrepreneur, sometimes we, we love what we do so much that I feel like it consumes us. And sometimes we don't know. I have had to learn to put boundaries because I get so excited. I'm like, oh, yeah, we can open this and we can do that. But I'm also like, think about the time. Think about what you really want to do. Um, it doesn't have to happen overnight. And I think that's like the stress we put on ourselves. Also, I feel like social media, sometimes you see people, oh, I did this in a year. Mm. But it, and I get it, like even the same thing, like some people are like, wow, you start operating within a month or like within weeks of opening. You know how long some people have waited to like open the restaurants or sometimes it doesn't work out for them. So I also understand that like, Sometimes it takes longer than you want, and sometimes it happens faster. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you gotta go with the flow. You know, you gotta go with the crashes of the waves, whatever comes at you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, while we were talking, I was telling my dad about your business, and like, um, and he had told me before, but he was reminiscing to a time that he opened up a taqueria, um, and I was like three or four years old. Uh, I didn't know so much about this, but I was like, that's crazy, Dad. I, like, I've known you, like, I'm 34, you know? I'm like, Dad, I'm still learning new things about him. Right? Like, and so he's, yeah, I opened a, a taqueria, and um, the my his brother-in-law's wife was the cook, and his my sister, uh, my older sister was like la mesera, like the server, mm -hmm. and he was he and his brother-in-law were going half on the rent because and it was working for three months and but my dad also owned the shoe repair so the main people that were in the restaurant was uh his brother-in-law his brother-in-law's wife and his his daughter and um and he told me he's yeah but we had to close because like the, the, the cook left like she just left because they, they got into an argument no sé qué pasó so they got into an argument, and so basically we had to close down. And I was like, "What?" <laughs> like, so you—it's so crazy. You just things come up that you never expected, and you know, but you bounce back from it. You know, you learn from it. Um, so that's what I love about your spirit. It's just like you just take—you take your chance, and you go. Would you say that you go with your intuition and like your gut, or how do you make these decisions when it comes to like? when there's uncertainty how do you make tough decisions like that oh that's a tough part because <laughs> i always joke around that i am a gemini <laughs> and that i am also i i haven't been it's i, I haven't i think i have adhd just because of how i am <laughs> so i'm always like i don't know if it's that oh, but I, I sometimes feel like I do really quick decisions. Mm -hmm. uh, and it makes me sometimes feel like I might be too impulsive. Mm -hmm. I, for me, it's just like, let's, let's see what happens. Mm -hmm. Let's see what happens. Yeah. I, I mean, what's the worst case scenario? Like even here, I'm like, well, what's the worst case scenario? My, my lease is for two years. Mm -hmm. yeah. And kind of like your dad, right? Like I, I think one of the things that I have learned is this might just be a face in my life. And sometimes we're just so stuck with our identities. Mm -hmm. So for me, I was like, oh, I'm a teacher. And like, that's the first thing, like, I think a lot of people, when they introduce themselves, they're like, oh, my name is, and I am. And it's like always like our career. Mm -hmm. So I feel like for me, it's like, well, this might just be a face in your life. And if you need to let it go in three years, that's fine. Like mm -hmm. something better is gonna come your way. Mm -hmm. Though it's, not, it's easier said than done. So I think practicing a lot of detachment of the outcome mm. is what has really helped me because when I first started here, I remember, and I told you this on the phone, I, I we had a zero dollar day, I think it was our second or third week. And I was like, oh, this is it. This is the end. I'm not going to sell. It, it's, it's never going to work out. And I I left that night and I remember thinking, I can't, I can't continue living like this every single day I have a bad day. Mm. And the way I just took it was more like, you know what, I'm so happy that I get to be here. Mm -hmm. I'm so happy that I get to be here. And like, if it's 50 bucks that we make, then it's 50 bucks more. And if it's 100, and if it's 200, if it's more, 
so just detaching myself from that and i think also just like i get to be here that's so crazy that's so amazing right because i feel not to get all like really corny but i'm like you know anything can happen to me like i could be in the hospital i can even be like i can be dead today and like you know life's gonna move on so i feel like just having that gratitude that you get to do what you love doing that's that's perfectly fine and also for me like even now when we're having a slow day i use those slow days to like paint here and paint there and organize this and make the space be more like beautiful and i'm like you know what i'm so happy like no clients came because then i wouldn't have done this and that right i think just seeing the the positive that you're doing I think that that calms our nerve systems a lot. Uh, I tell my dad because I go with him on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I'm like, Dad, every day you have to say to yourself, today we're going to make so much money. <laughs> <laughs> like, because se pone in this mindset of like, a ver que hacemos, right? And it's, sometimes it's 12, it's noon, and we've made like $50. And it's mm-hmm. like, bueno, ahora no vamos a hacer nada. And then by, by 5.30 we got three people that I had you know more than a hundred dollar service right? yes so i'm like see that you just gotta not to just be like positive because you can't and of course it's business but you know the the energy you bring in and the the way you see things affects also how you run your business because of the way that since we own a shoe repair you know people leave their shoes so they either most of the time want to not pay Mm-hmm. and they're like oh i'll pay when i come back and i'm like um no we either require the up now or give a deposit um because people sometimes never come back <laughs> and we've done the yeah. work right um and that's why we have so many like bags and shoes and that's why i want to open up a thrift store because <laughs> like there's so many things that we have that people never picked up but anyway you just he has all this time to like focus on the work and i'm like see that like you still did a lot of work and these people came and we made this much money and um but se pone in this scarcity mindset of oh like ahora no va a caer nada and mm-hmm. i'm like oh, that like you still have three hours left yeah <laughs> so i have no. to like remind him um to get mm-hmm. out of that scarcity mindset but yeah like that's business as you may say like as you say negocio like there you have days that are terrible and there's days where it's like this is a great day like you know but it's still a lot of work you know it's still Mm -hmm. um yeah and that happens all the time like even for me like even this week i was at the stand and it was like 1 30 and i hadn't sold that much and i'm like oh i'm just i'm tired i wasn't having a good day actually and i'm like oh i think it's a sign for me to go (laughs) and (laughs) and then uh i had like like three groups only three groups come in mm-hmm. or and then like maybe two like people like single mm-hmm. and they their orders were so big that it was like the equivalent of like i don't know like nine people coming in yeah so I, it's uh, it's i think that's the beauty of business that it just boom out of nowhere you can make this much money that you would have done the whole day in a slow day or at the end. At the end, exactly. <laughs> you know, or sometimes like you'll have, you know, a, a day that casi nada cae, but like a, that same week, another day have booms. It makes up for the other day. Yes. You know, so it balances out at the end. I think. Um, so I'm confident that you're gonna like see it. Like I wish you so much luck uh, Thank into you. this new business. We're gonna come back. Uh, Sunday, so I'm gonna come back with my family to come and support. Um, so uh, remember to come and support Sierra Mexican. Is it Sierra Mexican cuisine? It's still Sierra Mexican cuisine because that was the name we had originally placed. It, though I do wanna change it to Sierra Mexican Cafe because it's a cafe, and then Sierra Mexican cuisine still keep it, but eventually we open. One just for tacos or Mexican food, it'll be that one. Okay. That, okay. That's the plan. Yeah. Well, come on over and support uh, Lucy at Sierra Mexican Cuisine slash Cafe <laughs> at some point. Um, and I'm so excited for just what you are going to do with your business and like how you continue to teach. Also, like I know you have your own podcast. 
So before we wrap, um, can you talk a little bit about your podcast and also where we can find how we can work with you and how we can get in touch with you? Yes. So my podcast is The Socia Effect. And socia because in Spanish, socia or socia means business partner. So the reason I, I called it the socia effect is to, the, the socia effect is because I want us to be business partners. Yeah. Yeah. It is that vibe. And the subtitle is Breaking Barriers, Embracing Success, just because I believe that a lot of us are breaking barriers. And embracing success is, I think, a challenge for many of us. Mm-hmm. And I feel I, every time that a guest comes to the podcast, I want them to tell us how they have embraced success or what are the things that they are embracing, that they have accomplished. Because I feel that a lot of the times we don't celebrate ourselves as much as we should. So that's a podcast and it's on Spotify and Apple. And uh, you can find me at on Instagram and TikTok by Lucy Ortega. And my website is by LucyOrtega.com. I am going to start business coaching March because right now I am working on the recipe book that I have. So if you also check out my Instagram, you will be able to find the link to pre-order that recipe book that I'm putting a lot of effort into it. And it has a lot of the recipes that we, uh, of the guisados that we sell at our taco stand. And Sierra on Southgate is where you can find the cafe. So our social media handle. And then for the ta- for the taco stand is Sierra Guisados. Awesome. That's incredible. Well, I hope you go and follow Lucy over at uh, all the handles that she shares. And all <laughs> it's the a lot. <laughs> I will include them in the show notes, of course, like everything. Um, and I think, honestly, we, you might need to come back because there's a lot more that I want to like I there's so many other questions I want to ask you but um, we'll keep it there we'll wrap it up thank you so much for just sharing your story sharing what you've learned and how you've opened this cafe and your decisions and your story thank you for having me thank you thank you for listening to the be a boss coaching podcast remember to come on over to the be a boss coaching.com and book your free discovery call where you can learn more about coaching with me, what it takes to start a business and grow the skills while growing your business at the same time. I'm excited to learn more from you. Remember to sign up to our newsletter and come back every Monday and Friday for new episodes.